بسم اللہ والحمد للہ والسلاۃ والسلام علی رسول اللہ اما بعد رب شاہ صدری و اسلی امری وحل العدت ام السانی افو قولی السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ مائی ڈیئر بردرز انشاء اللہ ٹوڈے وی ول کنٹینیو اور اسٹڈی اف سورہ توبہ اینڈ دس ول آلسو کمپلیٹ سورہ توبہ انشاء اللہ ایز وی گو تھرو آیا نمبر 105 انٹل 129 ٹوڈے لیٹس سٹارٹ جسٹ لائک ایوری ادر لیسن ام from actions from our previous lesson number one was check your actions and words when you think no one is watching so a lot of the times shaitan puts this vaswasa that you know you are alone no there is no one and you know this is something secret that you're saying even when you are in a conversation with someone you think however allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching and he is the knower or of, of everything so we have to keep this thought in mind in order to always uh, do the right thing so it is very very important that Uh, you know we check our actions and our words when we are speaking especially when we think that we are alone because actually we are not alone allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching us um number two was there are people who criticize you for charity or striving in the way of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and people say ah why are you giving so much um and you are you're so young and why are you, you know spending time for religion this time you should be building your career and studies and all of those things so yes um studies career everything is important we have to sustain in this life as well however we need to stay balanced in order to also focus on our akhirah which will be the unlimited life then the third action was strive in the way of allah subhanahu wa taala with your wealth and life to receive great reward from allah subhanahu wa taala this action is very important and this is a continuous action that is also coming in uh, since the past lessons in surah tauba because this is the theme of surah tauba how the munafiqeen they were not joining the battles of uh, for islam for allah subhanahu wa taala with the companions of the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and we will see the accounts today as well uh, of similar stories that will unfold in front of us and finally important thing is to acknowledge our mistakes allah subhanahu wa taala is the most merciful when we seek forgiveness and we have uh, uh, repeatedly seen this in the holy quran during our study that allah subhanahu wa taala mentions that allah subhanahu wa taala forgives those people who truly repent so um, and before repentance and asking for forgiveness obviously we need to have this attitude that we have to acknowledge our mistakes because these days people they don't acknowledge their mistakes we don't like to acknowledge our mistakes and we try to put the blame on someone else however this is not the right mindset um uh, especially when we see the guidance and teachings of islam and finally there was um about giving charity and spending in the way of allah give charity to receive two great benefits obviously allah subhanahu wa taala repeatedly mentioned that he increases our wealth in this life in this world as well plus he purifies and blesses us when we are giving out in charity a lot of the time it helps to washes away our sins because all of us we continue to commit small or big sins Uh, depending on the context as human beings obviously we need to um, continuously ask for forgiveness and try our best not to um, fall into those sins however when we give out charity allah subhanahu wa taala also purifies us and washes away those sins and uh, bad deeds that we may have done and blesses us in the hereafter as well moving forward to today's lesson a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim aya number 105 baquli malu fasayara allah amalakum wa rasuluhu wal mu'minun so the, uh, the the discussion is continuing especially with the mushriks um and say do and and so basically allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam to convey to them that now start to act take some action take some corrective action for your life then allah will see your deed and his messenger and the believers everyone will see that you know you are now striving in the way of allah subhanahu wa taala again the address is to the munafiqin wasatu wasatu raduna ila alim al ghaibi wa shahadati fa yunabbiukum bima kuntum ta'malun and you will be brought back to the knower of the unseen so allah subhanahu wa taala again this is being highlighted that allah subhanahu wa taala knows the unseen so normally what people do not see that is for example if you have an evil in- intention inside your heart then no one else can know right only you know that munafiqeen generally they are they themselves know that they are munafiq because on the outside they are appearing as if they are with the muslims they are with the good people however from the inside they have this nifaq or this evil thing evil intention 
So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, if you start to take practical actions to correct yourself, then you will be brought back to the knower of the unseen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already knows the seen and the unseen. So he would know if you actually are striving to get back and the scene, and he will inform you of what you used to do on the day of judgment. Everything will be clear. Everyone will know what they used to do. So what was the intention inside their hearts and what were the actions that they were doing? Everything will be disclosed on the day of judgment. And others deferred for the command of Allah, whether he will punish them or he will turn in mercy to them. So basically what happened is during the battle of the book, when the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions were going for this battle, there were certain companions or there were certain people who were left behind. And out of them, the three of them, Marara uh, bi, uh, Ar-Rabi, Kaab bin Malik and Hilal bin Umayyah. These were the three companions of these Sahaba. They were not truly Munafik. However, they, they were just left behind out of, let's say, laziness or they were thinking that, okay, fine, we will join. But then they got delayed. They said, okay, fine, we'll join them in a day. We will catch up because it's a big caravan that was going. And they kept on differing. And then, you know, they couldn't join. So later on, they repented. And we will see in the upcoming ayahs as well that there was almost like a social boycott that happened when obviously the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and his companions, they returned and they found out that they did not join uh, the expedition. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deferred his decision for some time in order to train them, in order to coach them, in order to teach them a lesson. So basically what happened is during this time, while wait for, they were waiting for the verdict or for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if they have been forgiven or not, this was the time that there was a, a total boycott that was done from a social standpoint, from trading standpoint. And imagine in that close knit community, when you're living in a, in a, in a, tri a tribal life, you are a lot dependent on your social network. You're dependent on other people. You are dependent on trade. You are dependent on from a social. And these were the believers. These were the Sahaba of the Holy Prophet. However, <clears throat> they couldn't go. However, to teach them a lesson and to all of us and all of the people around, um, there was a period, a very tough period of time that um, they were almost isolated from the society. So this is what um, is being mentioned in this ayah. So, um, and others, so there were others uh, for whom the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was deferred, meaning delayed, whether he will punish them or will turn mercy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all knower and all wise. So this is also to teach them a lesson as well as it's a lesson for uh, broadly for all uh, the people to follow, even for us today. And those who take a masjid for causing harm and for disbelief and for division among the believers. So what happened is um, there was a disbeliever. He was a Christian um, and a believer in Bible. So he basically realized that the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the prophet indeed and the last prophet. However, he started hating him, uh, hating him and opposing him. And he also opposed him in a couple of battles uh, that the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam fought with Mushriks. So he supported the Mushriks as well. So what he did is basically they, he along with the, uh, some of the narrators say that there were 12 um, uh, Munafik. So they joined hands and they created a mosque outside of Medina. And the intention of this mosque was to do all their evil planning and to stop people who were entering Medina and try to uh, put doubt in their hearts and also turn them into Munafik and also to show that it is a mosque. So it is a center of good. However, there was evil intentions and wrong actions that were being happening and planning and, you know, things were happening against the uh, Muslims and the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this mosque is said to be very close to Masjid al-Khubah. So Masjid al-Khubah is the first mosque that the Holy Prophet built when he entered Medina uh, for Muslims. And uh, so they tried to build another mosque, but it was more for causing harm as is mentioned here. And those who take a masjid for causing harm and for disbelief and for division among the believers, And as a station for whoever warred against Allah and his messenger before. So basically it was a station for those people who disbelieved in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا يَحْلِفُنَّ إِنْ أَرَدْنَا إِلَّا الْحُسْنَ 
and surely they will swear that we do not wish, wish anything other than good. So these are the people who are monafic, obviously. So on the face of it, they're saying, no, 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 it's a mosque built for Muslims to support for prayer and all of these things. And, you know, to, to, to manage the affairs and everything. And we only, uh, uh, we mean only good. Wallahu yashhadu innahum la kadibun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bears witness that indeed they are surely liars. Um, and this masjid uh, was called basically Masjid al-Dirar. And uh, the, the, the person, the disbeliever, the Christian uh, who was opposing the Holy Prophet who created this with the Munafik, his name was Abu Amir al-Rahib. So this was the person who created this mosque and there will be an account that will come forward as well. La taqum fihi abada. Do not stand in it ever. Now, the, uh, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, don't even go closer to that mosque because if the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, let's say, would have visited or prayed because he does not know the, the inside int intentions. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning him as well as the companions that do not go in it because if you go there, it will get legitimized. People will think that it is actually a true mosque. La masjidun ussisa ala taqwa min awwali yawmin ahaqqu an taquma fi. A masjid founded on the righteousness from the first day is more worthy that you stand in it, meaning Masjid Quba. So that is the mosque. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is drawing comparison uh, about this Masjid Al-Dirar and this Masjid Quba. So the Masjid Quba was created by the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the first mosque and it was when you on the way to Medina when you enter. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying this Masjid Quba is the one that is built on righteousness. This is the first mosque. So this is more worthy that you go, you stand in it and you pray. Versus this Masjid Al-Dirar, which is uh, the foundation of which is laid on um, 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 wrong, uh, wrongful actions and, and evil designs of the disbelievers. <inaudible> Within it are men who love to purify themselves. So this is the right mosque, the, the Masjid Khuba that is built on righteousness. So there the people who go, they really want to purify themselves. They don't have any evil intentions. Wallahu yuhibbul mutahakhirin and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the ones who purifies themselves, meaning who seek forgiveness and who try to purify themselves and try to correct their actions. Afaman asasa bunya nahu ala taqwa min Allah. Then is the one who founded his building on righteousness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Waridwanin khairun. So then is the one who founded his building on righteousness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his pleasure better than the one who founded his building on the edge of a cliff, cliff which is about to collapse. So it collapsed with him in the hellfire. So it basically collapsed with him in the fell. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is drawing two comparisons. Earlier, there was a comparison between two mosques. One was built, Masjid al-Quba, which was based on righteousness. Then there was this Masjid al-Dirar that was made in order to conspire against Muslims and for the evil designs. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is drawing comparisons of personalities of a person who's building his character. So when a person is building his character based on righteousness or taqwa or fear and love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his pleasure, he is much better than a person who is building um, who is building his character on negativity and evil plans. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also drawing a comparison. Wallahu la yahdil qawmaz zalimeen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not guide the wrongful people, the people who have uh, who have this wrong thing. So now I just want to pause here and ask a question to you guys. Let me see who can answer. Um, out of the two houses that you see in the image, which house do you guys believe is built on a strong foundation? Who will answer? The right, the right one. The right one. Why do you think uh, Hafiz Abdul Majid? Why do you think this is the one on the, which has a strong foundation? Because this uh, has a strong uh, uh, base. Excellent. Excellent answer. You're right. And we can see it. This, the right one, has a very, very strong base. 
you can see the way the bricks are being laid out however the right uh, the left one is almost on the edge and it is about to fall this is the comparison that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is drawing for us okay so the right answer is obviously the right one as we can clearly see in the image however the the lesson out of this is as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the previous ayah that in order to build our character it has to be like the house that we see on the right our character should have a strong foundation and by the way it is not easy to build a house with a strong foundation for example the one that you see on the right probably they have to join all the stones and bricks and concrete and make it strong and solid a lot of effort is required obviously if you do a a, a flimsy job like you you just create i mean if you want to create a house and you don't create the foundation and you don't give it the due time to make it strong put water on it and then wait and then you know all of the 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 right process always is the hardest versus if you try to take a shortcut similarly in our lives when we are building our character it is not easy it's not easy because every time you have to be conscious of what you are doing because then we have to focus is this the right action that i am doing will it harm someone is this in line with what allah subhanahu wa taala is saying is this halal is this haram so so this requires a conscious effort so building our character according to the taqwa or righteousness or the fear and love of allah subhanahu wa taala is not easy so this action that you know is just i'm just summarizing it in just one slide this is based on how you you live your entire life so basically you have to live your entire life being conscious all the times what i am doing is this the good thing or is this the bad thing is this taking me to surat al mustaqim which is the right path or am i um, uh, differing or am i moving away uh, or am i leading myself straight to the wrong path you know so this is a lifelong struggle that the believers have to do and we have to make sure that we are consciously building our character based on taqwa and we are doing the right things that have been asked we are following the halal things and we are abstaining from the wrong things and the haram things as well as we have to be conscious on how we are treating others as well so righteousness has to be the main focus for us to build our character moving forward لا يزال بنيانهم الذي بنوا ريبة في قلوبهم إلا أن تقطع قلوبهم. Not will cease their building which they built in uh, cause of doubt in their hearts, except that they are cut into pieces. Arts. Now this is a very uh, this is a very strong ayah that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is saying. So basically, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is saying that when they are building their character based on doubt. and based on their evil designs then their hearts are getting um, contaminated and their hearts are getting polluted because when you create a doubt in your heart and this can be this is true for anything in life let's say somebody is confident and you know there is a race happening and the one of the child one of the kid is really confident that he will win and you know he's tried and he has practiced and everything else and then there is another child who is also practiced and he is also physically strong but he has doubt in his heart chances are the one who is believing maybe he will give in his 100% and he will win the race versus the one who has doubt in his heart so here allah subhanahu wa taala is also drawing this conclusion that when they have they, they have doubt in their hearts so they will not cease i mean they will not stop building the wrong building or the building that you know that is almost on the edge of the cliff that is about to fall because they have doubt in their hearts the only thing that can cleanse or that can um, fix it is except that they are uh, that they are cut into pieces their hearts except their hearts are cut into pieces wallahu alimun hakim and allah subhanahu wa taala is the all knower all wise let me explain this with an example for example today when cancer is detected in one part of the body let's say so this is a human body let's say and there is a, a part within the the abdomen and there is cancer detected normally what happens is when it is a localized cancer then doctors advise to make a surgical intervention and they do a surgery so basically they cut that part and in order to remove it from spreading and by the way this entire case of cancer is not really easy it is very hard for the patient himself for the family it is expensive it is very painful and you don't even know you know how how and when you will recover or it will relapse so it is a very painful painful procedure so here similarly allah subhanahu wa taala is mentioning how doubt and hypocrisy 
becomes the disease of the heart when you do not have solid iman and when you are thinking otherwise when you are uh, talking to people one thing while you are believing in something else this hypocrisy this doubt becomes a disease of the heart and hearts needs to be chopped meaning it has to go through a lot of difficult uh, difficulties in order to be purified again why because now this disease has start to spread in this heart so basically these people who are hypocrites if they want to come back then they have to make it a, a conscious effort and ask for forgiveness of allah subhanahu wa taala so this was a very strong aya uh, and 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 a strong um, expression from allah subhanahu wa taala about the people who have hypocrisy and who continue to move towards and start to build their character built on hypocrisy and it is very very difficult for them to revert back to allah subhanahu wa taala which means almost like chopping of the heart or cutting away the disease and then you know getting purified again it's very difficult inna allah ashtara min al mu'minina anfusahum wa amwalahum indeed allah subhanahu wa taala has purchased from the believers their lives and their wealth now this is a beautiful aya that is coming in and imagine the context what is happening so there are wars being fought and now allah subhanahu wa taala is training the believers um the the companions of the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the sahaba and all the muslims that were around them so allah subhanahu wa taala is saying um indeed allah subhanahu wa taala has purchased from the believers their lives and their wealth bi anna lahumul janna because for them is paradise yuqatiluna fi sabilillah they fight in the way of allah subhanahu wa taala fayaqtuluna wa wa yuqtalun they slay they kill and they are slain sometimes they kill they are they defeat the enemy sometimes they are being killed and 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 getting killed uh, in in the war as well wa then alaihi haqqan fit taurati wal injili wal quran a promise upon him to in taurat injil and the quran so the 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 guidance of allah subhanahu wa taala is consistent across all the books and across all the prophets and messengers that he sent here allah subhanahu wa taala is saying when you fight in the way of allah subhanahu wa taala so the believers who fight with their lives and their wealth meaning that they are spending in the way of allah subhanahu wa taala then uh, allah subhanahu wa taala gives them paradise in exchange waman awfa bi bi ahdihi min allah fastabshiru bi bayyukumul lazi ba yaqum bi wa dhalika huwa al fawzul azim and who is more faithful to his promise than allah subhanahu wa taala so rejoice in your transaction which you have contracted with and that is the ultimate great success so here basically um if you talk about trade you know when when uh, when a transaction is happening when somebody is one party is buying and another one is selling right so this is basically trade i'm sure this is uh, um you guys know this as well so in a in a normal trade you know one party is buying and the other party is selling and allah subhanahu wa taala is saying that if you look at this life that allah subhanahu wa taala has given us and the uh, has given us and the wealth and everything that eventually allah subhanahu actually allah subhanahu wa taala has given us then this is a beautiful way of allah subhanahu wa taala describing that if we invest our life if we invest our wealth which by the way from the start anyways is given by allah subhanahu wa taala then he exchanges it for janna and paradise and if you think about it this life and the wealth that we have here this life will end so death is a reality right we have discussed this multiple times and wealth is something that you anyways leave behind so once you die i mean your wealth and your house and your car and your bank account and everything is here and this life is limited so once you strive in the way of allah almost obviously in a balanced way so it's not like you just completely go out there and you start no so even i mean you can enjoy this life with the wealth and everything you can consume what allah subhanahu wa taala has blessed you with but you have to also spend it in the way of islam in the way of allah subhanahu wa taala and then this will be exchanged for janna or paradise which by the way is unlimited so while you are giving away this very small limited benefit that you have here in this world you will get an unlimited benefit in the form of paradise which is janna so the action for us is we should strive in the way of allah subhanahu wa taala and islam and this is a continued action that is coming in throughout the study of this surah and um, with and we need to strive with our wealth with our lives so obviously wealth by wealth means that you give out charities and you spend in the cause i mean in spreading islam as well and then from with our lives 
meaning our time, our effort, our skills. And if there is a war, then we also take part in the war in, on the side of the Muslims against the believers or disbelievers. And if we get uh, slain, as it was mentioned before, then you know the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, uh, first of all, you will be shaheed and amongst the shahada, and then the only reward is paradise. So this is the exchange and transaction that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about. So once a person starts to believe and he starts to take this action that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has mentioned here and he strives in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants them with Jannah. There is a Sahih Hadith related to this ayah as well, narrated by Abu Huraira Allah ta'ala anhu. Allah's Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah guarantees him who strives in his cause and whose motivation for going out is nothing but jihad in his cause and belief in his words, Islamic monotheism, meaning his motivation is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's not going there to war, to let's say get the bounty or, you know, we'll get the spoils of war or anything, nothing. His only uh, motivation is he wants to do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even for any good deed in life, this should be our principle. Whenever we are giving charity, it should not be to show others, see, I'm, you know, I'm, uh, I'm such a great person and I'm helping others and taking a selfie and all of this. No, our motivation should be only to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That he will admit him. Now, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is guaranteeing him, uh, the person who strives in his cause, and the motivation is only nothing but jihad for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he will admit him into, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will admit him into paradise if martyred or bring him back to his dwelling place whence he has come out of what he gains of reward or booty. So it's a win-win situation. If you win the war, you are a winner and obviously you get all the booty and the benefits of war and the reward that is related to it in this world. If you do not win the war and let's say you get slain or you are killed during that, then you are a, a martyr and paradise is guaranteed for you. So it's a win-win situation in both situations for the believer. Another hadith. Uh, narrated by Jabir uh, bin Abdullah Allah, on the day of the battle of Ohad, a man came to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, can you tell me where I will be if I should get martyred? So if I get martyred, I'm, I'm, we are about to go for the battle of Ohad. Can you tell me what will happen to me once if I get martyred? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied in paradise. So he asked, where would I be? So if I die, somebody kills me, what will happen? I mean, and the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, in paradise. The man threw away some dates he was carrying in his hand and fought till he was martyred. So he just, you know, forgot everything. So he, maybe he was carrying his dates for trade or whatever. And, you know, he just dropped it and he went for war and he got martyred. So that is the belief and action uh, of people and uh, of the companions and the Sahaba at that point in time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also grant us uh, this belief and uh, bias to action. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah is defining the, further defining the believers. So what are their traits and look at the amazing sequence that they get, um, uh, they get uh, specified here in this ayah. Attabeuna, abidun, those who... Atta, atta ibuna. Atta ibuna, thank you, Jazakallah. Atta ibuna abidun, those who turn in repentance and those who worship. Those who turn in repentance, those who worship, those who praise, those who go out, those who bow down, those who prostrate, those who enjoin the right, and those who forbid on the wrong, and those who observe the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa bashiril mu'mineen. And give, grand, uh, and give uh, glad tidings to the believers. Now let's look at this sequence. This is amazing. So we have to strive hard to be among the believers with glad tidings. Now I'm sure all of our objectives as Muslims is to be among the believers whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving the good news or glad tidings of Jannah. So this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is defining the sequence. So these are the people who turn with repentance. So whenever they do wrong, they go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. Even, and we have discussed this even before, 
that even if we are doing a good deed, our good deeds are not perfect. They can be full of mistakes and we can make mistakes even when we are doing any good deed or a good action or a ritual that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us to perform. So we should continue to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness and turn with repentance. Then these are the people who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, and you know, when we say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, who go out, who move around, who, who go out in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it can be to spread his deen, it can be to spread knowledge, it can be to spread education about Islam, who bow down when we are praying and who prostrate, meaning when we are doing the sujood in, during our prayer and who enjoin right, meaning who encourage people who are doing right and who forbid wrong, meaning if this, when they see anything that is going wrong in society, going, somebody is doing wrong, then they, start, they stop this wrong. And then overall, they observe the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have been, as we said, we have to walk on the right path. We do not have to even get closer to the wrong path or wrong things. A lot of the time people ask questions, if I should do this and this, and you know, this is the thing. It can be related to any financial thing. It can be related to any social thing. People try to move towards the edge of it until the last moment. What we have been asked as Muslims is, that we have to observe the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and stay away as much as possible. Not even get closer to those limits because chances are if you go, if you go closer to a limit that you may end up crossing it without even knowing. So it is better for us as Muslims to observe and know the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and try to refrain ourselves completely and stay away as much as possible. Moving forward. I number one and thirteen. Ma kana li nab li na lin nabi ki walladina amanu an yastaqfiru lil mushrikina walau kanu ule qurba min baadi ma tabayyana lahum annahum ashabul jahim. It is not for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and those who believe that they ask forgiveness for the polytheists, even though they may be near of kin, meaning they may be near as if they are their relatives. After what has become clear to them, meaning after that they are the companions of the hellfire. So there were a lot of people and we know it was a combined society um, in Makkah and Medina and, and people had a lot of relatives. So some of them reverted to Islam. However, sorry. Is there a comment? Sorry, 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 sorry. No problem. Uh, mistakenly. So I was just saying that um, when it has become clear that somebody is a mushrik and he's fighting in the way of Islam, then even if they are your relatives, you can uh, not ask for their forgiveness because these are the pe people, these are the companions of the hellfire who have declared on which side they are. And now in the next ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give another, uh, a very strong example um, in a case that we will see of Ibrahim alayhi salam. So let's go through it and I'll uh, explain uh, what happened. وَمَا كَانَ اسْتِغْفَارُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ لِأَبِيهِ إِلَّا عَمْ مَوْئِذَةٍ وَعَدَهَا إِجْيَا And not was, so, and, and Ibrahim alayhi salam was not asking for forgiveness for his father except because of a promise uh, that he had promised to him. So what happened is when uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam's father um, he turned him away. He turned him outside of uh, his house. There was a time because Ibrahim alayhi salam was constantly challenging the belief of his father and the people around them uh, against the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he himself believed. So what happened is his father turned him outside, uh, away from his house. So as he was leaving the house, he said that, you know, I will pray for you uh, from my master. This was the thing he said. So just because he had made this promise, he prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, what happened? فَلَمَّا تَبَيَّنَا لَهُ أَنَّهُ أَدُوْبُونَ لِلَّهِ تَبَرَّعَ مِنْ So what happened is, but when it became clear to him that he was an enemy to Allah, he disassociated from him, meaning he separated himself from him. And then he did not make, uh, 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 and did not ask for forgiveness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, this is a very... Uh, strong example because this is the extreme case. In the previous ayah we saw Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying don't even ask for forgiveness for the non-believers even if they are your relatives. And here is the one big solid example of somebody, I mean imagine the love of Ibrahim alayhi salam for his father and imagine the, the, the pain that he would feel in his heart because his father was not following the right path. So 
he would obviously ask for forgiveness for his father. But once he realized that, uh, once it became clear to him that he was an enemy to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he, even Ibrahim alayhi salam, separated himself from his father. Now, this is a big example, let alone any other relatives or any other things or any other associations Muslims may have with any of the disbelievers. Inna Ibrahima li abbahun haleem. Indeed, Ibrahim was compassionate, forbearing. Moving forward. And it is not for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he lets go astray that a people after when he has guided them until he makes clear to them what they should fear. So basically it is not because some people say, ah, oh, we are misguided. Because if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted, we would have been, you know, we would have followed the right path and everything. No. As we have seen in the, in the, in the previous lessons as well, it depends on the, uh, the intention of the person. The first step, the first intention has to be from the person himself. We have to take the first move because this is the test, right? Otherwise, if everything was according to the, let's say everything was uh, controlled by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he was not giving us this choice, then we would have said it's not a fair test. How come we are getting thrown into hellfire or we, somebody is getting into Jannah while, you know, we don't even have any control. No, here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying he never lets anyone go astray or on the, on the wrong path until he has guided them and he has made clear to them what they should fear, what will be the consequences. In Allah bi kulli shayin alim and indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the knower of everything. No one can make these excuses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows our intentions. There will be no excuses ex 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 accepted on the day of judgment. Inna Allah lahu mulku samawati wal earth. And indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to him belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth. Yuhi wa yumeet. He gives life and he causes death. Wa ma lakum min duni Allahi miu wa ligyu wa la nasir. And not for you besides Allah any protector and there is no other helper. So... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala categorically is stating a universal fact that he is the only helper and protector regardless of any evil designs anybody is making, regardless of how difficult the war is in front there is no choice for a believer but to join and no choice for a Muslim or a person but to join the, the army of Muslims and the companions and the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only helper and protector and he will eventually make the Muslims and the, the, the people on the right path victorious. And we have, as we have said, even before, uh, we have learned even before in the previous ayahs, even if they get slain, they'll be martyrs and they, the, the, they have the glad tidings of paradise. So in either case, it's a win-win situation. Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turned in mercy to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the immigrants and the helpers, those who followed him. So again, the sequence. So the, the, the people who migrated with the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who were part of the initial struggle of Islam, um, the Mujahideen uh, and, and they, the Mahajireen, the, the Mahajireen who, who came from Makkah to Medina, then the helpers, the Ansar, who received them with both hands and who really helped them to establish, again, restart their lives. And those people who followed him in the hour of difficulty, in the hour of difficulty, after what nearly deviated the hearts of a party of them, then he turned in mercy to them. So basically, when the Holy Prophet Muhammad ﷺ returned back, uh, from Ghazwai Tabuk as well, there were a lot of people who wanted to, and, and some of them who were, who were left behind, they came in to ask for forgiveness of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because for any reason, maybe they were not truly uh, munafik in their hearts, but maybe because of the laziness and because of other reasons. So some of them were really, um, uh, they, they, want, they, they were going together uh, in groups so that, you know, um, for, for, to ask for forgiveness. And some of them were really not sure because, you know, it's like, it's like when you're going to someone, when you have made a mistake and your heart is like, you know, how will he react and how will I get punished and all of these things. However, so some of them were really not sure, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that all of them turned for mercy together and they were forgiven uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Innahu bihim ra'ufur rahim. Indeed, he to them is most kind and most merciful. 
So the problem is not that they have made a mistake. The problem is that they, the people who, the question is those who will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not, which is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the list of believers that we saw the first item was that they ask for, they go uh, and they ask for forgiveness. They do repentance. They repent. They understand that, yes, I have made a mistake. This is the first realization that is very, very important to even ask for forgiveness. So these are the people who repent once they have done something wrong. And on the three of those who were left behind, recall the three Sahaba, the companions that I mentioned, whose, um, whose verdict was delayed and it was deferred. Marana bi Arabi, Kaab bin Malik and Hilal bin Umayya. So these were the three Sahabi and the companions of the Holy Prophet who could not go. So now their, uh, uh, their uh, decision was delayed and I told you they went through a very tough period. Hatta iza zaqat alayhimul arzu bima rahubat wa zaqat alayhim anfusuhum wa zannu alla mal jaa min allahi illa ilayhi. And on the three who, those who were left behind until when was straightened for them, the earth, though it was vast. So it, they felt like, you know, they were, they were, they had limited things and they were, um, they were restricted on the earth while the earth is vast, meaning they, 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 they did not have any social ties. They could not do any trade. Nobody was talking to them. So it felt like that the earth has shrunk for them and they felt choked, though it was vast and, and was straightened for them, their own souls. And they were certain that there is no refuge from Allah except to him. This is beautiful. Um, um, mentioning here that, you know, it's like they knew that now there is no one and even their souls, they realized from inside and they were really, um, uh, it was really tough and challenging for them to go through that state because first of all, the social boycott of the people, the, the, the people were not really responding to them and everything. This in itself was one thing. But they could feel it from inside that even from their souls were not satisfied. And now they had to seek refuge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they kept on asking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the period when they were asked to wait. And this was again a lesson for them as well as for all the people around. And they, they realized that they can only seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because as we saw in the previous ayah, he is the only protector and the only helper uh, for Muslims. Thumma, then what happened? Thumma taba alayhim liyatubu. Then he turned in mercy to them that they may repent. In Allah huwa tawabur rahim. And indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the acceptor of repentance. He is the most merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives. This in itself, this ayah is also giving us reassurance. We are not perfect Muslims. We make mistakes every day. We incur sins knowingly and unknowingly. So we should always return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we do something wrong, our, our souls should also, this is a test of our belief and our iman. Our souls should also get shaken. We should also feel something wrong, something bad inside as a believer um, and as Muslims. So it is very important that we build our character on righteousness so that even when, you know, it's a simple thing when you, uh, when you enter into a place, let's say, or in a restaurant or someplace and there is music going on, it should actually disturb you as a Muslim, uh, for example. Um, and, and this is just one small example. And there can be multiple other examples in financial transactions and socially. I mean, I mean, when you go out, because inside the house, you can control the environment. It is easy. But when you move out of your house, um, uh, depending on, the, on our context, there can be a very challenging situation. So we should feel like, you know, it, it, in our soul as well. And then we should revert back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For his forgiveness, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the acceptor of repentance. He is the most merciful. It's like, you know, in the previous ayah, this part where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that there is no refuge from Allah except to him. The last part, if you can see the last line, this is like, you know, when, uh, when a child does a mistake and, you know, he, he, he has done something or if he has offended his parents, let's say, and his parents are, you know, they're angry to him. Then eventually, I mean, um, eventually he has to revert back to his parents, right? There is no other place that he can go. So from that angle, if you look at it, the same analogy for all human beings, for us as Muslims and believers, even when we do something wrong, eventually we have to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so rahim. 
um, and he's the acceptor of repentance and he's the most merciful that he will always, always accept our forgiveness. So we should try our best to always continuously ask for forgiveness. As I said, our lives are not perfect. Um, uh, even the good deeds that we do, some, they are full of mistakes and they are not at all close to perfect. So the only way we can enter paradise is if we continue to ask for forgiveness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us, uh, enable us to ask for his continuous uh, forgiveness and may he forgive us and have his mercy upon us. Ameen. Moving forward. Ya yu al-lazina amanu taqo allaha wa kunu maas sadiqeen. O you who believe, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those who are truthful and be with those who are truthful. It is very important. Who is your company? Are the people around you, your friends, your folks, your relatives, are they growing you iman or are they taking you back? Are they inviting you to parties that you should not be going to? Are they inviting you to things that you should not be doing? Or are they the ones who are also truthful? So we have to make sure that we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we try to get good company and be with people who are also truthful and who are also believing so that we can help each other grow in iman um, uh, and, and, and grow our, uh, uh, our practice of Islam. مَا كَانَ لِأَهْلِ الْمَدِينَةِ وَمَنْ حَوْلَهُمْ مِنَ الْعَرَابِ أَنْ يَتَخَلَّفُوا عَنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ ولا رسول الله ولا يرغب بأنفسهم أن نفسي. It was not for the people of Medina and who were around them of the Bedouins that they remained behind after the messenger of Allah سبحانه وتعالى and they do not prefer to their their lives to this life. Yes. So basically, when the call of battle and when the call for uh, any ghazwa was made, the Muslims are being asked to join them. So those people who were in Medina and all in the surroundings and all of the Muslims who actually believe, they have been asked that this is not a choice. They, you, they, you could not remain behind. When the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, makes a call, then you have to follow. Uh, and you have to, because your life is not more precious than their lives as well. So it is equal. And obviously when you will strive in the way of Allah, we read it earlier. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exchanges it with Jannah. ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ لَا يُصِيبُهُمْ ذَمَاءٌ وَلَا نَصَبٌ وَلَا مَخْمَسَةٌ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Because they, uh, that is because they do, does not afflict them a thirst and not fatigue and not hunger uh, in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whenever they go through any hardships, whenever they feel hungry, because it was not easy. Uh, I mean, especially the battle of the book, the ghazwa, it was very far off and it was a very long journey. So it is not easy. I mean, a lot of the things can come uh, their way. They, are, they, can, they can get thirsty, they can get tired and they can get hungry. So whenever they do that, whenever they will join the, the Holy Prophet and the companions and his companions, then they will feel all of this. And when they will feel it for the way of Allah, وَلَا يَتَعُونَ مَوْتِعَيْ يَغِيزُ الْكُفَّارَ وَلَا يَنَالُونَ مِنْ عَدُوِّنْ نَيْلًا إِلَّا كُتِبَ لَهُمْ بِهِ عَمَلٌ صَالِحٌ And when they will go through this in the way of Allah and not they take a step, any step that angers the disbelievers, and not they inflict on the enemy an affliction except is recorded for them in it as a righteous deed. So whenever you take this tough journey for the way of Islam to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then every step that they take and every harm that they may do to the, in, to the disbelievers and to the enemy, um, all of this is recorded. Every step that they take, the walking and the, the, the hardships that they're fa facing of the thirst, of the fatigue, of the hunger, everything is contributing towards a righteous deed. Everything is getting re recorded and they will be rewarded for all of this that they're doing in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah la yuzayu ajr al muhsineen. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not allow to be lost the reward of the good doers. Again, this, this, is a, this is a learning for us as well. If we do any little thing to help someone, any righteous deed that we do, even when you, uh, when you spread the message of Islam, and even if you're teaching one ayah to a person, all of this is getting recorded. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not let any of our efforts go away. 
um, and uh, everything of the of the good doers with a good intention, it will be rewarded by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Wala yun fiquna nafaqatan sagiratun, wala kabiratun, wala yaktauna wadian wadian illa kutibalahum liyajziyahum Allahu ahsana ma kanu yamalun. And not they spend any spending, small and not big. And not they cross a valley, but is recorded for them uh, that Allah may reward them the best of what they used to do. So anything that they're doing, even when they're spending in the way of Allah, be it small, be it big, even when they cross a valley, which is by the way, what not easy. It's a very difficult journey uh, to cross all of their deeds. Everything is getting recorded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a reward that they will get. وَمَا كَانَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لِيَنْفِرُوا كَافَ and not is for the believers that they go forth altogether. Now, this is an instruction coming out for at that point in time that uh, all the Muslims should not go to the war together. So, if not go forth from every group among them a party that they may. Um, obtain understanding in the religion and that they may warn their people when they return to them so that they may be aware. So there are different groups and there are different roles and different parties have been given and so that you know when you are forming an army and when you are forming for an expedition it's not like everyone should leave obviously because then you will open your territory for attack from other enemies as well. However what ha should happen is that from each of the groups, different groups and parties, different people should go and they should uh, join this war. And so that when they return, they can share all the things with all the groups and all the groups can benefit in terms of the bounty, in terms of the way, everything that they learn. So that uh, everybody, when they return and all the groups within uh, Medina and a city, they get uh, the understanding, because we have to understand one thing. It wasn't like, you know, there was a TV channel and everybody could get the news. No, people used to get it from each other. So when these groups are going, so when you're going for a war, take representative from each of the groups. All of the groups should join uh, uh, that war so that when they return, they can get the blessings and all the learnings from that war to different uh, groups that were residing together. Ya yu lazina amanu. O you who believe. Qatilu lazina. Fight those people who yalu nakum. Minal Kuffari are close to you of the disbelievers. So those people who are disbelievers and they have stated it and now there is no turning back. So those you, uh, of you who believe, fight with them. And let them find you in you harshness. So it is fine if they feel that, you know, you are getting, you're becoming their enemy. It is okay because now they have declared, they are declared disbelievers. And know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with those who fear him alone. Don't be fearful. Don't think that, ah, if they see me fighting against them, maybe they will attack me back and what will happen and they can cause me harm and all of these things and they are strong and all of this. Don't get all of these thoughts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the person who fears him alone. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will become your support. Don't worry about it. As long as they are disbelievers, you have been asked to fight against them. Because some of the people may be thinking, ah, if we go and we fight them, maybe they will next day, they will bring in a bigger army or what, what will happen. And, you know, these used to be our relatives, these used to be our whatever people whom we used to trade or whatever. They could be other worldly benefits. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is clearly saying that you have to fight those who are disbelievers. And, you know, whatever happens, even if they think that you are their enemy, and if you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, then his support is enough for you. وَإِذَا مَا أُنزِلَتْ سُورَةٌ فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُ أَيُّكُمْ ذَادَتْهُ هَذِهِ إِمَانًا And whenever there was a, there's a surah revealed among them, are those who say, which of you it has increased uh, by this in faith? So basically, the Munafikin used to ask people whenever there was a surah that was getting revealed that, ah, so uh, did your faith increase? And, you know, uh, in that way, As for those who believe, then it has increased them in faith and they rejoice. So whenever, because we have to understand one thing. These are the people, the companions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and revelations are getting revealed to the Holy Prophet. And this is like, you know, the new way of life, the new laws that they are getting. Uh, 
um, just like we saw the, the instruction in the previous ayah as well. So these munafiks, because every time imagine there is a law being passed that you have to practice. Imagine yourself in that society. So you are amongst the companions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A revelation came, comes. And for us, it is a surah, it is a book, it is Quran. Although we should also read it in a way that we improve our lives and act upon it. However, it became bounding, binding upon the companions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all the people around them to implement it in their lives. So basically, um, they, uh, some of the munafiks, they used to ask, ah, so the surah has revealed and you know, uh, have you really grown in faith and uh, how do you feel about it? Are you, are you, is this uh, good for you or whatever? So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying for the believers, it always used to increase them in faith and they used to be happy because uh, this is also a source of glad tidings for them. Moving forward. But as for those in their hearts, there was a disease who were munafik or who were disbelievers. It increases them in evil to their evil and they die while they are disbelievers. So those people who were not, uh, uh, who had evil intentions in their heart, they are the ones who get misguided and they are the ones who will die as disbelievers. Do not they see that they are uh, that they are tried in every once in a year or twice, yet they do not turn in repentance and yet they do not pay any heed to it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down many trials to those people, many hardships, yet they are not um, they are not learning from it. They are not turning into repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because sometimes some hardships can also be a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we need to revert back to him. This is also true for us today. Moving forward. And whenever a surah is revealed, some of them look to others. So what happened is, imagine the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam um, discussing these ayahs and these surahs as they were revealed with people and it's a big congregation. So there used to be some people, some munafiq. When this used to happen, they used to look at each other. Hal yarakum min ahdin thumman sarafu. Uh, does, see, does anyone see you? Then they turn away. So they used to look at each other and say, if it's somebody, um, you know, watching us or not, let's just move out. I mean, when because there are some instructions that have come, maybe we don't want to follow. So we'll just say, ah, we didn't even, we did not know about it. And they just continue to do their tasks. So whenever surahs were being revealed, they were trying to play these things. And they were, because they used to be, now the Muslims were growing and there were so many people. The Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would not know who has, who is the munafik inside uh, from their hearts. So this was the trick that they used to do. They used to look at each other and see if there's somebody is watching or not. And, you know, just uh, move away and turn away. Saraf Allahu qulubahum bi annahum qawman la yafahoon. Allah has turned away their hearts because they are a people who do not understand. So now their hearts have been turned away because of their evil intention and because they don't want to understand and do not understand. لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا أَنِتْتُمْ حَرِيسٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَوْفُ الرَّحِيمِ Certainly a messenger has come from amongst yourselves and it is very sad for him when you suffer. So he becomes grievous. He becomes sad when you suffer. And he's concerned over you to the believers. And he is kind and he is merciful. If you see the contrast, the way this surah started, there was no uh, Bismillah rahman rahim that is written before this surah because it started with a very, very strong ayahs. And, you know, so here now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding everyone that certainly the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who's bringing you these revelations are for your own good. He is the sort of person who grieves and he becomes saddened himself when he sees the people suffering. And when he sees the people who have, who are not coming to this path, who are not becoming believers because he knows everything that he's revealing down his truth. And he is the source of mercy for, to, for the believers, those people who believe. Um, and, and, and he's very concerned over you. And finally, the last ayah for this surah. فَإِن تَوَلَّوْ فَقُلْ حَسْبِ اللَّهِ But if they turn away, 
then say Allah is sufficient for me. Here you can draw a contrast from the way we started as well. La ilaha illahua. There is no God except him. There is no ilah, meaning the one who should be worshipped, loved and feared uh, and followed. That's the definition of ilah. So when we say Allah, the ilah, the only one who should be worshipped, feared, loved and followed. So there is no God except him. There is no ilah except him. Alayhi tawakkaltu wa huwar rabbul arshil azim. On him I put my trust and he is the Lord of the great throne. Now this is a, a dua that we should and prayer that we should also remember. Hasbi Allahu la ilaha illa huwa alayhi tawakkaltu wa huwar rabbul arshil azim. So... Um, this is an instruction that uh, the whole, uh, the, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But if they turn away, then say, Allah is sufficient for me. This part this uh, of this ayah, Hasbi Allahu la ilaha illa huwa alayhi tawakkaltu wa huwa rabbul arshil azim. This is something that we should memorize as a prayer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In tough situations, um, and when you are facing someone in, 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 a, in a challenging situation, this is this dua can put your heart at content, and this dua will bring you. I mean, it this is is reaffirming your belief in the help and support from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because He has the greatest throne. He is the He imagine the mightiest king that is there who's controlling everything. And if He's on your side, you will be super confident. So this ayah should also give Muslims confidence. Um, and this prayer specifically. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to all the believers in his time and all of them, all of us who are following um, after. Um, because Quran is a word that is, you know, valid for, um, for all times. So I think if we truly start believing this and praying this uh, dua, then this can really help us, especially in tough and challenging times. Hasbi Allah la ilaha illaha alayhi tawakkal tawa huwa rabbul arshil. Is it possible that uh, can I, I can talk to you a bit on chat? Uh, yes, yes, sure. Uh, the only thing is during the class, it is very difficult for me to um, uh, review the chat. However, if you want, you can connect with me on WhatsApp separately as well. Uh, okay, yeah, I got it. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Um, uh, just uh, to confirm one thing, your number, please. My number is in the, like the, in the WhatsApp in... group. It's in the WhatsApp group in the admin. Uh, my name is Adil Ahmed. Uh, okay, Adil. Uh, okay, I got it. Nine double sure. six five eight one. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Inshallah, I will. Thank you so much. Okay. So basically, before we close the class, the actions, the key actions from this class, um, we should build our character based on taqwa. Righteousness has to be the main focus. We saw a comparison that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala draw between uh, Masjid Al Quba and Masjid Al Darar. How the foundations of both of them were built. Masjid Al Quba obviously was the first mosque. Uh, built uh, by the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa on his way to Medina. And um, that was built as a house of righteousness and then house of Allah that was built on righteousness and then Al-Darar which was built by the Munafiqs um, and uh, for their evil designs. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala draw a parallel of how we should build our character. We should also build our character based on taqwa, based on righteousness, which means it requires a lot of effort. It is not easy. It's, it seems like a small action and a simple action that, okay, we have to continue to focus on righteousness. However, this is the ultimate struggle that we have all of us throughout our lives. So we should build our character based on taqwa and on righteousness. And it's a constant struggle that we need to take. Um, action number two, we should strive in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Islam with our wealth and our lives. This has been a consistent theme of this entire surah. What this means today is that, yes, we should spend our wealth in the way of Islam to further the message of Islam, to help others in charity, um, as well as we need to find some time from our busy schedules in order to also devote our lives. And obviously, this also means in, 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 the, in the context that it was shared in the Holy Quran was that they were fighting battles and it was a win-win situation for Muslims. Even when they were getting slain, they were martyrs and they were... Uh, uh, given the glad tidings or good news of, of paradise, Jannah, and even when they became victorious in this world, obviously they used to get the bounties and spoils of war. So for us, in, in the way to invest our lives is that we have to utilize our time, effort, skills to further the message of Islam and to bring the, uh, this 
uh, this amazing message to all other people who are around us. And inshallah, once we invest our wealth and our lives, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised that it, we will get in exchange paradise or reward of Jannah. If you see this life or if you see this wealth that we have in this life, be it house, cars, money, whatever we have, all of this is limited. It will stay here in this life. However, the reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us is for the unlimited life and we get to uh, live in Jannah or paradise. The third action was strive hard to be amongst the believers who have been given the glad tidings. And the definition that we got of the believers today uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that these are the people who turn with repentance. They realize their mistakes and then they ask for forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. They go out and about. They leave the comfort of their homes in order to... to uh, for the to, to spread the message of Islam and to help others. Um, they bow down and they prostrate in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only. They enjoin right and they forbid wrong. Whenever you see something good, you support it, you further it, you encourage others. But whenever you see something wrong happening, you forbid, you try to stop it. And then they are the ones who observe the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this can be a circle you can see. Observe the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But whenever you have crossed the limits, whenever you have made a mistake, then you turn to him with repentance. Then you worship him. You praise him during worship. So all of this is interconnected. And these are the, uh, the, the actions that a believer has to take in order to get the good news or glad tidings of uh, Jannah and Paradise. So before I close today's class, are there any comments, any questions? Okay. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayk. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are pure from imperfection and all praise is due to you. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship besides you. I seek forgiveness from you and return to you with your full obedience. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, my dear brothers. Inshallah, I will see you next week, um, same time. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.